Hello. Today I want to share with you how to bring the plan of God out of the realm of the spirit, the unseen realm, into the realm of the natural, the place of seen. Um, God has a good plan for you, which he ordained before the foundation of the world. Um, in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, shalom, that means nothing missing, nothing broken, and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. You see, this plan, it is hidden in the realm of the spirit. Um, God's plan for your life is already there in the realm of the spirit, and it was hidden there in the Holy Spirit before the foundation of the world. Now, to bring about the fulfillment of this amazing plan for your life, it is necessary to pray it out of the hidden realm of the Holy Spirit into the realm of the physical, into the realm of physical manifestation. And this actually causes me to ask you two very personal questions. First of all, do you really want to follow God's plan for your life? And secondly, are you willing to pay, pay the price of not running with the crowd? You see, the price, price might be high, but the rewards, oh, they far outweigh the price. And Jesus deserves our all because, after all, he gave his all for us. And in order to follow and obey his plan for your life, obviously, you must be able to hear him. And this amazing plan that God has for your life, it's a plan, a fulfilled life, living in health and wholeness, spirit, soul and body. That's God's plan for you. But if ever there's been a problem um, in the area that Christian people have had, it's actually in following and obeying the plan that God has for them. And to be honest, I think that the problem really is not so much in disobedience, but in um, difficulty in knowing how to hear what God is saying. And so I would like to try and help you by sharing you know, part of my experience and, and scriptures. And I will be sharing with you how to bring the plan of your life out of the realm of the spirit into physical manifestation. Because God had put it there, has put the plan for your life in the spirit before the foundation of the world. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse, verse 7, I, uh, Paul is talking about the wisdom of God being in a mystery. Verse 7, we speak this wisdom of God in a mystery. Now, mystery in the New Testament, it means um, something that people could never know by their own understanding. It, it needs a revelation from God. So we speak this wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God set aside before the world began unto our glory. What does unto our glory mean? It means being so filled with the Holy Spirit to a place where we're in the manifest presence of God. As I said last week, God is present everywhere. But when we really seek him, when we pray in the Spirit, then his presence is manifested, it's, it's tangible. And not only in the tangible manifested presence of God, but also in that area, we'll be able to bring out the things that we need to know from him and that only he can reveal from a place of being a mystery to a place of being instructed by him. As I said, God had an amazing plan for each and every one of us before the foundation of the world. I mean, that's so amazing. And he had this plan for us to live in his peace. As I said, shalom, uh, the Jew, that's a Hebrew word, meaning literally nothing missing, nothing broken. And I want to return to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting at verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God predetermined and set aside before the world began unto our glory. The wisdom which none of the rulers of this age understood, for if they had understood, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Verse 9, but just as it is written, I love this, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared 
for those who love him. God has prepared things for those who love him. And those things are the hidden things, God's hidden plan in the Holy Spirit. The plan of God for your life. Uh, eye has not seen nor ear heard or entered into the heart of man, this amazing plan that God has set aside for you. We can actually read verse 9 like this, that eye has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the plan of God for you, which God has ordained and set aside for you who love him. Verse 10, but God has revealed this plan to us through his spirit. Sorry, the literalist, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. God has revealed this plan to us through his Holy Spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Verse 11, for what man knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things, the thoughts of God, except the Spirit of God. And it's the Holy Spirit of God who reveals these thoughts, this plan to us. I just wanted us to compare Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. And God is speaking, he says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace, shalom, not evil, to give you a future and a hope. So God's plan is a good and wonderful plan. And it's the Holy Spirit who reveals the deep, hidden things of God. In other words, his plan for your life to you. Verse 12, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but we have received the spirit who is from God. The Holy Spirit is a revealing spirit, so that we might know the things God's plan for us that has been freely given to us by God. In other words, so that we might know how to tap into God's plan for us, which he has prepared for us before the foundation of the world. It's hidden, it's kept safe, but it's hidden and kept safe for you. Well, how do we draw God's plan for us from the, the realm of the spirit unseen into the realm of the natural? You see, as we are praying in the spirit, and we are praying out the plan of God for for us, for, for this situation that we are facing, for our life in other tongues, in a language that we've never learned, what is actually happening is that literally we are reaching back through time and space to the very moment that God spoke, that he made his declaration over us and made that plan for us. And we are drawing it back out where, from that area to the realm where it can be seen. But, you know, over time we can, lose, we can lose sight of the amazing importance of praying in the Spirit, of praying in tongues. Uh, and we forget the, the amazing blessings that, that come with that. I wanted to give you an illustration. Um, George Pearson is uh, the son-in-law of Kenneth Copeland and he's worked in the Kenneth Copeland Ministries for about over 30 years. And uh, George Pearson said, when we faced great difficulty, Ken prayed in the Spirit about it, and he would pray it and pray it out in the Spirit until God showed him the plan of exactly what to do. And this is interesting. George goes on to say and said, most often the plan was not what we thought we should do. And you see, God's wisdom has been stored up for us. It's not being kept from us. And that wisdom is drawn out of the spiritual realm into the natural by praying in tongues, by praying in the spirit. Often when we're praying in the spirit, we do not know what we're praying. Sometimes we get an impression, sometimes we don't. If we're really serious about seeking the plan of God for our lives, we must really seek the presence of God. We must come before him and worship him and honor him and just tell him how much we love him and how much we appreciate him and thank him for all his goodness to us. And then as we pray in the spirit, in, in other tongues, we must go beyond what we mentally know about a situation because um, 
we've got um, beautiful portraits up here. Imagine that two thirds of that was covered and we could only see one third of it. That is not the whole picture. But God is the artist, as it were, and God sees the whole picture. And it's unseen to us. And as we pray in the Spirit, so he reveals it to us. And this is God's way for us to lay hold on that plan, because after all, God has a plan for our life. He wants us to cooperate with him. He wants us to know what that plan is. But God shows us many times, step by step by step, faith steps. And so he wants us to draw that out by praying in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will reveal it to us. I wanted to give you another illustration. Um, Kenneth Hagen wrote a book, Plans, Purposes and Pursuits. And um, in one part of the book, he talks about how he was at a minister's conference. And one of the pastors came up to him and said, Brother Hagen, your ministry is well known throughout the world. Um, and he said, people know you, they know your tapes. What is the secret of your success? And Ken Hagen answered, the only secret of success that I know is walking in line with the word of God. You know, God's word says, forgive, love your enemies. As we walk in line, as we obey that word, um, we are more able to hear what God is saying to us. The only secret of success I know is walking in line with the word of God and praying and listening to the Holy Spirit. He said, I simply listen to what the Spirit of God says to do, and then I do it. And there was another occasion when Kenneth Hagin was at a lunch, and um, he just began speaking um, by the Holy Spirit. And a holy hush um, fell. Everyone was silent, because after all, he was only speaking to the people at his table. But suddenly the whole room fell silent, and everyone was listening intently to what he was saying. And he was talking about being led by the Holy Spirit. And he was saying, back in the 1930s, we didn't have cell phones and pages and emails. We didn't have all the things that we have now. In the church back then, we had to get information by the Holy Spirit. And he gave an amazing example. In one of the towns, there were some men who wanted to be baptized in water. And they prayed, and they prayed in tongues, and they prayed in the Spirit. Um, and the Lord said to them, told them to go to a certain church, go to such and such a church, and there will be a pastor and his associate waiting for you to baptize you. Now they believed what the Lord told them, so by faith they got up and they started walking towards this church. Now in the meantime, the pastor and his associate of that church they were praying that morning and praying in the spirit. Um, and in the interpretation of their praying, the Lord said to them, there are two men coming to you and they are wanting to be baptized in water. So the pastor and associate um, put action to their faith and they, uh, they filled the tank and they got everything prepared. And by the time the two men came to the door of the church, the pastor and his associate we're standing there ready to baptize them. And the men said, we have come to be baptized. And the pastor said, yes, we know. The Lord told us. Now, how did this happen? What did they do to make this happen? All the men in this story, in this true story, they were praying in tongues. They were praying in the spirit. And then someone asked, Brother Hagen, what is the secret to that? What do we need to be doing that we're not doing? And everyone is expecting, you know, a spine chilling, great big answer from Brother Hagen. And he answered, um, I mean, I've met him and it was, he just said, yep, yep, pray in tongues, pray in tongues, pray in tongues a lot. And I would say to you, pray in tongues, pray in tongues, pray in tongues a lot. This is biblical, you know, because Paul in his letter to the Corinthians, he said, I pray in tongues more than you all put together. And look at his ministry. Um, he, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he wrote more than um, a third of the New Testament. Um, 
when we pray in this unlearned language, praying in tongues, um, what are we praying? Well, we know from Romans chapter 8, verse 26, it tells us that the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. And that word help means that he um, takes hold of together with us against that problem, against that thing that has come against us. And in verse 27, it says, the Holy Spirit makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. You know that when you are praying in tongues for someone, when you're praying in tongues for yourself, which is good and proper to do, that you are praying the will of God into that person's life, into your life. Well, let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. It says, uh, or rather Paul's writing, he says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaks not to men, but to, to God. So we know that when we, when we pray in tongues, we're speaking to God. For no man understands him. How be it in the Spirit, in his Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, he is speaking mysteries. Now mysteries, it means um, sacred, divine secrets, secret truths. And so we are praying the secret, divine things that are hidden and not obvious to the understanding. Therefore, when we speak in tongues, we are speaking to God because no one understands us. But in the spirit, you and I, we are speaking those sacred, divine secrets, those hidden things um, that God has hidden in the realm of the spirit and are not, uh, not um, uh, obvious to our understanding, but they are revealed by the Spirit of God. So you see, in chapter um, 14, verse 2, um, he is talking about the bucket. Just imagine a well, and you need a bucket, to you let it down, and you fill it with water, and you bring it up. I mean, I've looked down a well that's like, I thought it was like 50 feet deep. You could hardly see the water down the bottom. And so, when you are praying, then it's like you are letting your bucket down and you are filling it with the wisdom of God in the realm of the unseen and you are bringing it up to the place where you need it and where you can see it. And so we are, when we are praying in tongues, uh, we are praying out the plan of God for this situation that we're facing for this particular person because there are things that in people's lives that God are not going to reveal to us. God isn't a gossip. And by the Spirit, when we pray in tongues, we can pray for their deepest needs without our mind being engaged and, and to pray out God's will for them and also for ourselves. So when a problem um, besets us, because you know you can be walking along and the sun is shining and everything seems fine, and then it seems like suddenly out of the clear blue sky comes wallop, a great big problem. So our natural inclination is to get upset. So I don't, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't, I've heard myself do this before. Oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So instead of doing that, what we need to do is just stop talking. Just stop it and get quiet and begin to pray in the spirit, begin to pray in other tongues. And I think it's helpful to hook up your faith and your understanding with this by praying, um, Father, as I am praying in the spirit, I believe that I am praying out your solution, your plan for this situation. By faith, Father, I receive your wisdom uh, for this by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And then I continue praying in tongues. And sometimes it's like the, the revelation will come quickly, but sometimes it can take a long time. Um, I need to explain that this revealing of, of God's plan, it doesn't always come out in a known language. Uh, sometimes it's just a conviction a real conviction of what to do. Sometimes you just know that you know. There's no other way of explaining it. You just know that you know what to do. Sometimes you hear it as a word inside you. I remember 
uh, I'm looking after, forgive me, uh, likening um, some things, but I'm looking after my brother's little dog because um, he's not able to look after her at the moment. And she is a Houdini. And I didn't realize that there was a hole in our fence. And um, she's, I let her out to the garden to do what little girl dogs do. And then I went to find her and she had completely disappeared. And I did remember seeing her in the bushes on the left-hand side of the garden. And when I looked, lo and behold, there is a small hole, but she's quite small. And um, I chased into the next door neighbor's garden. I was calling, I was shouting, I was walking up and down the street and I thought, I've lost her, I've lost my brother's dog. And unfortunately, she had got her, her name tab for where he lives, which is a village outside of Oxford. And I had to go to work. And I went to the guest house and I, I told Derek, but I, I still had to go on working. Anyway, Derek went to have a look for her and he said he looked everywhere and he went down the side street and he said he was just about to give up when someone called to him and said, have you lost a dog? Um, and he turned back and there was little Pippin um, and he carried her home. She'd had an absolutely wonderful time. But what I didn't say was there was a time when I actually prayed and the Lord said, she's found, it's, it's okay. So there was just that knowing, I knew that I knew that she was found. And I knew here, but my mind was still saying, she's lost, she's lost, she's lost. And I'm learning to listen to what the Lord, that inner knowing, that word, she's found. And so you can experience that too. And, it's, and I'm sure many of you already do. And sometimes when you are praying in the spirit, um, you'll just shift over from praying in an unlearned language into your own language. Um, and you may be surprised at what you hear yourself saying, but it's still by the Holy Spirit. And you know, the whole thing sits firmly on a basis um, of the Word of God, faith in the Word of God. You see, we want to do what God wants us to do, not what our heads tell us to do. Um, I didn't realize that I had very strong opinions. And one day, I was thinking really strong thoughts. And one day the Lord said to me, um, he said, um, you're very opinionated. You see, we need to be willing to accept God's correction, to accept his reproof, accept his rebuke. And when he reproves us and rebukes us and corrects us, it's such a wonderful way and you think, yes, Lord, yes, thank you for loving me enough to correct me. And so um, he corrected me and said, you know, you have very strong opinions. And, um, and I thought, no, not me, I haven't got strong opinions. That very day I heard myself voicing some very strong opinions and I thought, oh, I really am very opinionated, Lord, please forgive me. So. We want to do what God wants us to do, not what our heads tell us to do. And it needs spirit-led prayer. It needs praying in the spirit. As I said last week, let's make a habit um, of praying in the spirit, maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or even an hour every day, just praying in the spirit and saying, Lord, I want to pray your will into my life. And as I do it, I, I trust you to be guiding me um, by the Holy Spirit and believe that you are praying out God's plan. Um, Kenneth Copeland said, one of the greatest things that a man or a woman of God can do in prayer is to pray in other tongues. And the Apostle Paul said, I pray in tongues more than you all put together. It is good. And all we need to do is to stay hooked up with the Lord. And if we, I would like us to, to pray together and say, Father, as I am praying in the Spirit, I believe that I am praying out the plan for this problem, for my life. By faith, I receive your wisdom by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray in the Spirit. Believe the truth that it is the Holy Spirit 
who is giving you the words. Because the scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And in the letter of John, it says that um, when we pray according to his will, he hears us. And we know that if he hears us, we have the petitions that we desire. So be encouraged. Pray in the Spirit every day. Seek the presence of the Lord. Be open also for his correction, for his reproof, as well as for his words of encouragement. And know that as you pray in the Spirit, as you trust God with every word that you speak out of your mouth, you know that you know that you know that God's plan for your life will come from the realm of the Holy Spirit in the hidden realm into the realm of the natural where it can be seen. And I would just pray for you right now. Father God, I pray for all the dear ones hearing this message. Lord, help them and encourage them to pray in tongues, to pray in your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.